to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. Aren't you glad that you have light tonight? Amen. Amen. Good to see you, Mike. <laughs> Came in back there, didn't have a chance to hardly recognize you. Amen. Praise God. Oh, glory. <laughs> Privilege to know the truth of God, isn't it? For whosoever hath, hath what? Understanding. Knowledge. Amen. Amen. Because it is given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given for whosoever hath knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Come on. Yeah, you're responsible for what you read, what you seek, what you feed on, what you desire. God hold you responsible. Amen. For everything you learn or don't learn. Amen. Whosoever hath to him shall be given. And he shall be given more abundance, or shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, hath not what? Knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Well, I don't know much. You better shut that up and get to learning something. Amen. Well, I may not hardly know how to read. You better get to learning. Amen. You not got an excuse not to know how to read. If you pray, God will help you. Amen. I don't care how old you are. Grandma Moses can paint when she's a grandma. You can learn to do something even though you're, praise God, up in years, a senior citizen. Huh? Praise God. It may be tougher, but you can if you want to. Amen. You at least be found trying. You better do it too. God holds you responsible for that. He said, uh, For whosoever hath to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not from him shall be taken away, even that which he hath. That's the way God's economy works. I'm sorry. I didn't write the book. Amen. <clears throat> Praise God. Therefore speak I unto them in parables, because they seeing, see not, and hearing, hear not, neither do they understand. By hearing, and in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is wax gross. Their ears are dull of hearing. Their eyes have they closed. You better watch that. You'll not be able to get them open if you're not very careful. Amen. Lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and And should be converted and I should heal them. Amen. Word of encouragement to you that hunger for the things of God. But blessed are your eyes for they see. And your ears for they hear. Hallelujah. That word blessed means happy. Very, very happy. Everybody's happy. Say amen. Everybody's happy for what you've heard and what you've seen. Say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them and to hear those things which ye hear and have not heard them. Amen. Amen. Mark chapter 5, 4, and verse 23. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. Everybody's got at least one good ear tonight. Hold up your hand. Are you glad of it? Do you appreciate it? 
You don't know how marvelous your hearing is. You cannot begin to imagine. Don't ever take it for granted. Your hearing. And with your multi-million dollar hearing. As a matter of fact, if I was a billionaire and didn't have hearing, I'd gladly give it all to be able to hear. Multi-billion dollar hearing. And you put hearing and seeing together. You can watch the performance. You can see things happen. You can see the person and hear the person both that's doing the talking. Amen. Oh, amen. Take heed what ye hear. It's in your Bible. Mark 5 and 24. He said to them, Take heed what ye hear. With what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you. And to you that hear shall more be given. Amen. For he that hath, to him shall be given more, more knowledge, more understanding, more perception of the Word of God, a clarity of understanding and vision about spiritual things. Hallelujah. Amen. For he that hath, to him shall be given. He that hath not, from him shall be taken. Even that which he hath. Are you listening tonight? Amen. Luke 8. It's a whole lot like it. Amen. 17 says, For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. Take heed therefore how. Mark said what? Luke says how. Amen. We need to take heed what and how and maybe I should add who we listen to. Huh? Amen. Are you with me tonight? And take heed therefore how ye hear. For whosoever hath, amen, hath what? A good ear full of the things of God. Amen. Whosoever hath, to him shall be given. Going to get some more. Amen. I'll give you some more. Hallelujah. Whosoever hath not, hath not what? His ears are empty and void of the knowledge of the good things of God. Amen. You don't have to be satisfied with a half a loaf when it comes to the knowledge of God. Every last one of you have a Bible. If you don't, it's because of your own neglect. Amen. It's your own fault. Amen. I recommend to you to read good, helpful books. I don't believe in reading no books. Well, what's the difference in books and preaching? Amen. Good books is good preaching on paper. Amen. You read all kind of fiction junk. Amen. Harlequin. Amen. I don't... Uh, I, I haven't read any of them, but uh, I've seen them around. Christian homes, amen. Amen. All kinds of magazines, all kinds of fiction junk. You know what fiction is? It's lying on paper. Amen. That's what it is. Amen. Never really happened. But we feed on that. We feed on the wind. We feed on lies. And we like it better than the truth. And we're like the Chinaman that the missionary gave him a Bible and he came back in a week and threw it down at his feet 
And he said, what's the matter? Didn't you like the Bible? He said, no. He said, why didn't you like the Bible? Because he said, every time I read it, it kicks me. <laughs> amen. Could it be that, amen, we need to move our <clears throat> position? If we get kicked every time we, need to, we read the Bible, could it be we need to move? Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Take heed therefore how ye hear. For whosoever hath to him shall be given. Whosoever hath not from him shall be taken. Don't ever refuse Bible truth. Amen. Amen. It can be the key to great blessings for your life. Your future. Amen. Don't ever give ear to error. Because the devil just needs to get his big toe in the door through one error. And that error will make room for another one. Amen. And another and another. What is error? It's the absence of truth. Amen. He that hath not from him shall be taken. Even that which he hath. Amen. What is truth? That's what Pilate asked Jesus. Amen. And Jesus said, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Hallelujah. Say, I read it, but I don't understand it. It's because you haven't read it enough. Amen. Well, I tried, but I didn't get nowhere. Are you saved? It makes a difference when you're saved. Amen. And uh, amen. A lady had a book one time and she started reading and threw it down. And, and, and after some time, amen, she picked it up again and began to read it hungrily. And, uh, and, and, and for long hours she read and they said, what made the difference? And she said, I fell in love with the man that wrote it. Amen. It makes a difference when you fall in love with the one that wrote it. He is the Word. Hallelujah. Praise God. Sister Collins has been reading me last week some old love letters. She dug them out from somewhere. Her and Judy, you know, cleaning the house. And uh, she just chuckling and, and giggling and laughing and reading me my old love letters. And I said, I ain't moved. Hallelujah. <laughs> Whew, glory to God. Amen. Got the job done. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you fall in love with the author, it'll get the job done. You know why she read them in the first place? <laughs> Amen. She had a little bit of a, 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 a little bit of a teensy winksy bit of a, a infinitesimal amount of uh, uh, what we call <clears throat> love. <laughs> so she read them. Amen. And somehow they got kept. I don't know how in the world they got kept. Amen. Hey, but they got kept. Praise God. But it makes a difference if you love the author. Praise God. I'm preaching tonight on inner ear trouble. Hallelujah. Oh, this hearing, this magnificent invention of the divine from this oracle out here. A-U-R-I-C-L-E, oracle. That's your ear. Scientific name for your ear. Amen. Shaped kind of like a horn with little ridges around it, you know, to amplify the sound as it goes around and enters your head from both sides. Amen. Catches it. Hallelujah. And that's just the beginning. It enters in and, and the sound waves uh, hit the first roadblock in there called the eardrum. They've got a scientific name for it. And I thought I'd get the uh, Encyclopedia Britannica down and uh, uh, look at everything. And there were so many parts and scientific names. Uh, I thought, oh boy, I'm in trouble about our magnificent hearing. 
Amen. Our magnificent here in there is an eardrum that collects vibrations and a hammer and a stirrup and an anvil. Amen. Those are uh, 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 kind of a, uh, everyday terms for those scientific parts of the hearing. Amen. And that in turn hooks on to electronic wire called a nerve and goes to that part of the brain, amen, that hooks to the ear and interprets to the brain the things that you're hearing right now. Isn't that magnificent? Amen. The ear collects sounds. Amen. And they have never made a machine as high fidelity as the human ear. And they keep trying to perfect machines and get sounds and pitches and notes in there. Amen. And when they do, amen, oh, they'll find, praise God, they'll have a hard time. Praise God, creating a brain with the right cells in the right place and the right wiring apparatus to collect it in high fidelity. You're hearing it tonight in person. Praise God. Amen. Glory to God. Did you know that no matter how good the machine that men create is, that your ears is ready for it? And ready to pass judgment on it, whether the sound is good or not. Already there. Already made. Already created. Praise God. Not only, amen, do your ears have all these sound collections, amen, among other purposes that the water in the inner ear serves, amen, is your leveling device. God had a bubble in his level when he created a human ear and put one in each ear, in each side. And that's why I can stand up here, amen, and uh, that's why uh, little Becca started walking, amen, and that's why little Lily back there has started walking, praise God, because her ears grew to the place that the liquid inside the ears told them how to stand up straight and not fall over, amen. Now, due to stress and nerve problems and sometimes disease, if you have inner ear trouble and you go around dizzy-headed, and you, the world goes around and around, and you can't hardly stand up, and you go through the house hanging on to things. A lady called me today, want me to pray for her. She said, and I've got inner ear trouble too. She didn't know that's what I was going to preach on tonight. Amen. Only I'm not preaching on your load leveling device, uh, amen, that you got inside each ear that helps you to stand up, and you couldn't stand up without it. Isn't it amazing what God has done? Praise God. Hallelujah. When I speak of inner ear trouble, I'm talking about spiritual inner ear. Amen. Did you ever try to talk to anybody and they're staring off into space? You knew they could hear. You knew they had two good ears, but they wasn't hearing a thing you said. Amen. My wife accuses me of turning her off. Comes in handy sometime. Amen. But uh, it, it, it uh, is a possibility that you can actually be equipped with two good ears and not hear what somebody's saying to you. If you don't believe it, ask me. I do it all the time. Sometimes not intentionally. Amen. Because I've got my mind, uh, let me paraphrase that, I've got my inner ears and attention attuned to something else. Amen. Oh, glory to God. Amen. Oh, the miracle of the human ear. And oh, the spiritual miracle of having spiritual 
ears. Praise God. Amen. And I mean, brother, if you've got sight, and that's another story, the amazing ability to translate through these irises and through these limbs, uh, amen, to a nerve ending in the back of your eyeball uh, and carry that message to the brain. And you can tonight sitting here, if you're in good health and born normal, you can both see and hear. And it is a family disaster if anybody is born without both seeing and hearing. They call it handicapped. Amen. I could preach here tonight on being spiritually handicapped. Amen. Why? No spiritual ears. No spiritual eyes. Jesus said, blessed are your eyes for they see. Blessed are your ears for they hear. Amen. Jesus told one group of people, he said, before I came, you had no sin. After I came and told you about it, now your sin remaineth. There's just one problem. If they don't hear God's cure for sin, then God takes away the cure and they still have to face the judgment. Anyway, amen. Praise God. Amen. Is it possible to have all of these miraculous things working and still not here? Amen. Now, praise God, with eyes and ears both, amen, you walk into the kitchen and your smell is working good. Amen. And the wife is fixing something that you like. And with your eyes you see it. And with your ears you hear it frying. Amen. And with your nose you smell it cooking. What a combination. Amen. Praise God. What a wonderful combination. Praise God. God was merciful to humans. And he let us hear. He let us see. But did you know a dog can hear a, a hundred times better than we can? Amen. Did you know that uh, uh, a dog can smell a million times better than we can? Amen. Did you know that a eagle can see a hundred times better than we can? Got telescopic eyeballs. Can pull in on a mouse. Amen. A mile away. Amen. Can see a fish near the top of the water. Amen. A thousand feet high. And make a power dive. Amen. And catch that fish in its claws. Amen. And never go under the water. And fly away with that fish and eat it. Amen. Praise God. Amazing things that God has done. Hallelujah. I tell you what we need to do tonight. We need to get all this together. We need to get our natural hearing and our natural seeing. Amen. And our spiritual hearing and our spiritual seeing together. Amen. And the Bible uses a term throughout the Bible, a word called hearken. You ever read that in the Bible? Hearken? Well, if you read the Bible through, you read that word 153 times. Amen. If you read the Bible through, you read the word hearkened. Amen. Past tense. Uh, hearkened 71 times. Amen. Think of it. Praise God. Over 225 times in the Word of God, the word hearken and hearkened and hearkeneth and hearkenest is found in the Bible which has the same root meaning. Amen. Hearken means, get on to this now. Hear this. 
Amen. I'm getting ready to put one on you. I want to give you a hearken saw definition for the word hearken. Amen. It means to hear with obedience. Amen. They hearken not, nor incline their ear. Their foolish heart was hardened. Amen. They went backwards. In, they walked after the imagination of their own evil heart. And they went backwards instead of forwards. Why do people backslide? Because they don't hearken. Why do people lose out with God? Because they don't hearken. Why are church pews, amen, filled with people blooming with ignorance because they haven't listened. They was doing something else, playing hopscotch, daydreaming about what they're going to do tomorrow, talking to their neighbor. Amen. I was surprised a sister called me the other day, amen, and uh, told me how she learned things in church. Sitting right in church. I said, how in the world do you learn all that stuff here, all that stuff? In church, sitting in church, supposed to be worshiping God. Amen. Evidently, there's a whole lot of gossiping going on in the pews while people sitting in church. They're talking to each other. They're telling each other the latest news and missing God. Amen. Amen. Now, I'll tell you something. You didn't come here tonight to learn the latest juicy gossip or to drop any to your neighbor. Amen. Hallelujah. And you know why some people are willing to talk to you if you're getting some input while you're right in church? It's because you're willing to listen. My advice is don't make your ear a garbage can for anybody. Amen. That wants to come to church and ain't got anything better to do but gossip. Amen. Glory to God. I was just a little bitty kid in Old Field Creek Church, and my dad told me to come in from work out working on a WPA building roads that they, they dug into a graveyard. And how he dug into a grave. Amen. And so I went to church that night, pumped and primed to inform anybody close to me, amen, what I had learned. Amen. So I said right out and loud in church, amen, to one of the neighbors sitting right beside us, I said, my dad dug a grave, dug into a grave today. I said, so loud people laughed all the way around me. Amen. Well, I found out years later that I didn't come to church to do those things. I didn't come to church to talk about everything under the sun, but what I was supposed to be talking about. Amen. Glory to God. I didn't come to church, amen, to curl up my lip because I saw who was there, or turn up my nose because I saw who was there. Amen. You may not know what's happened between that person and God. Amen. And Bill Gothard said there's no grace for a third party in a quarrel. The two that's in a quarrel, amen, they might have grace and they might come out of it and they do. Amen. Brother walked up on my front porch this Monday morning, knocked on my door, amen, and I went out and shook hands with him and he said this is after 50. Years, he said, I owe you an apology. Amen. And he won't care if I tell you. Amen. Brother Albert Clark apologized to me on my front porch. Amen. After 15 years, Monday morning, said with tears in his eyes, It's the most foolish thing I ever done. He said, I want to go to heaven. Praise God. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? 
Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. I said, I forgive you, brethren. We just had a good prayer right on the front porch. It didn't take me the snap of your finger to forgive my brother. Amen. And put my arm around him. Amen. And pray with him. I said, Lord, bless Brother Clark. Praise God. He was my friend before. And he'll be my friend again. Amen. But I told him, you listen to other people. And that's what teed him off. The third party. Amen. Praise God. Me and some of those people, we got along all right. Amen. We got over it. But it took him 15 years. Praise God. But it's right now. It's all right now. It's all right now. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, don't listen to everything you hear. Don't listen to everything. We need to be careful who we listen to and what we listen to. We need to learn to listen to the Lord and listen to the Bible. The Word of God. How terrible to know that this precious book is filled with untold riches to bless every phase and facet of our life from the cradle to the grave. But we refuse to hear it and rob ourselves of untold eternal blessings. Amen. We refuse to hear it. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. I'm so glad that as soon as I got saved, I began to read Mom's 30 cent Bible and mark my place. There's a lot of things that I didn't grasp at first, but it blessed me anyway. I felt good because I got saved and I was reading the Bible and it made me feel good. Even though I didn't understand it, it was feeding me and I didn't realize how much it was feeding me. And I realized that it got kind of slow and I kind of got bogged down when I got the so-and-so begat, so-and-so, and so-and-so begat, so-and-so. And I'll just be honest with you. Amen. There was a time that I didn't get very interested in, amen, Ezekiel measuring the temple. So many reeds and so many uh, lengths and uh, the angel is holding one end of the rule he is holding the other and is measuring things uh, amen that I couldn't hardly fathom praise God but after I decided praise God I'm going to have a stake in it uh, hallelujah I went back and I decided I'd like for Ezekiel let me hold one end of the rule because it might be mine uh, hallelujah when I get to the other side uh, he might be telling me something I need to know I need to tell somebody he might be telling me it's about some treasure amen that I'm going to have on the other side some blessing is going to be mine on the other side if nothing else Ezekiel is telling us that there is going to be a temple there is going to be a people there is going to be a God amen there is going to be a people worshiping God amen and God's going to have a place to do it in Woo! Hallelujah. Amen. How'd you like to be around when it all starts happening? Praise God. When we start skipping, praise God, around the top of that amethyst wall, 1,500 miles uh, to the corner, and in 1,500 miles to the next corner, and in 1,500 miles to the next, woo! We'll have time to do it, uh, praise God, but that because there, time won't run out. That don't mean there won't be no sun. That don't mean there won't be days and nights on the earth. That don't mean, amen, that there won't be no clock necessarily. Praise God. But it'll mean that we'll have it all throughout all eternity. Praise God. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad you know that you know that you know that you know? Hallelujah. Praise God. You say, I don't know. 
Amen. It'd be better to say, I'm trying to learn. And by the grace of God, I will know while traveling through this world of sorrow I'm on my way to glory land I'll not turn back for some tomorrow my trials here I'll understand I want to know more about my Jesus I want to know more about my Lord I want to know more about that mansion I'm gonna receive as my reward I wanna know more about that homeland Amen L.D. Moore told about the lady that said if he stays in the book of Revelation one more Sunday and not come back to Sunday school anymore not me I wanna know more about that mansion I wanna know more about that homeland Amen. And after I reach that heavenly city, I mean to know more than I know now. Stand with me. I want to know more about my Jesus. I want to know more about my Lord. I want to know more about that mansion I'm going to receive as my reward. I want to know more about that homeland. I mean to go there someday, somehow. After I reach that heavenly city, I need mean to know more than I know now. Amen. There's just one thing that puts you above a dog, that puts you above an eagle. That puts you above, uh, amen, a cat. Uh, amen, they may be able to smell and hear better than you, except for one thing. And that is you got spiritual ears and spiritual eyes uh, that can hear all the way to heaven and back uh, and see all the way to eternity. Woo! Glory to God, and that puts you above the rest of creation. Amen. And if you want to know more, if you're willing to give your life to it, you will know more. And if you see in here what you need to see in here, you're going to want to know more. Amen. You're going to see your need of knowing more about the Lord. Did you ever see anybody, even though there's one time in church, one time lived by the Bible, one time saved, today they're lost outside the church and got enough crazy ideas to kill them? You know what's wrong with folks like that? God took away the knowledge they had. He took away the understanding they had. He took away the knowledge of the book they had. He took away their spiritual ears. Amen. And they're spiritually deaf. Amen. They're spiritually blind. They're retarded, handicapped spiritually. Barring some miracle of God, they'll never, 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 never see. Amen. It's wonderful, Lawrence, when God heals. But what about when God blinds? What about when God deafens? That's what I read to you tonight. There's a bunch that God said, I blinded their eyes. I deafened their ears. Lest they should hear. And I should heal them. Why? Because when they had knowledge. When they had the message. When they had the truth. They had a chance. They one time walked in the Spirit. They rejected it. God blinded them. God deafened them. I mean, they've been deaf for years. They've been blind for years. They still go to church once in a while. Some of them goes quite frequently. And sits there like a frog batting its eyes in a hailstorm. They don't know what's going on. Because they're blind. Because they're deaf. And I'll venture to say, God did it. Because they trampled His blood. 
His Son, His Word. They willfully closed their ears and God said, Oh, you don't want to hear, do you? He unplugged them. Now yeah, you won't be able to hear. They closed their eyes and refused to see. God said, you don't want to see, do you? He unplugged their eyes till now they'll never see. That's the way most of Israel was. 2020 vision. Walking around blind. Amen. Inner ear trouble. Unplugged. Amen. Hey, you better be careful about unplugging your own ears to the Word of God. Amen. You ain't been unplugged till God unplugs you. You haven't been unplugged till God puts out the lights. It says now, you'll never see. Amen. God holds us responsible for what we see and what we hear. And how it sinks in. One time he said, let these words sink down in your ears. What we let sink in. There's a still small voice that talks to the inner man. That's the one that got me the night I got saved. Sister Jackson said the Jews have become a nation. Amen. And Jesus is coming soon. That was in July. After the Jews had been proclaimed a nation in 1948. In May. And it got through to me. It registered. It got to my inner ears. It spoke to my spirit. Jesus is coming soon. And you need to get ready. And it's now or never for you. That's what God told me that night. If I hadn't got saved that night, Mike, I don't believe I'd have had any more chances. He'd already spoke to me several times. And he told me, it was now or never. How many times will God speak to us and us close our eyes and our ears and think we're getting away one more time? We made it out the door, didn't go to the altar one more time. Only to find that for the next unforeseen period of our life, our spiritual ears, our inner ears, and our inner eyes was so unplugged. It'd be like my uncle. I reminded him how we used to go to church together, how we got saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. And he hung his head and looked at the floor. And he said, I thought I did. What was the matter with Jay? Was it because he was unplugged? That he couldn't even remember how it was when he was really saved? Filled with the Holy Ghost. He's not got saved yet today. His life's a wreck. All he could say was, I thought I did. It's his way of downgrading the experience that he once had as a boy. Just like me going to church. Just like me going to the house of God. Just like me hearing the gospel. There we both sat in the same room. One plugged into heaven and trying to win a lost soul. And he's so deaf and so blind that he can't even remember that he was really saved. It's just a passing thought in the past. Amen. But what about the future? A man that go into eternity unplugged in eyes and ears and heart. Unable to respond to the gospel. Unable to earnestly cry out to God. Amen. Amen. Ah, we need to take heed how and what and whom we hear. Lest the light that shine on our pathway be turned off and never shine again. I want more light, don't you? I don't want the darkness. I felt that. 
Oh God, I don't want the darkness. I want the light. I want to see. I want to hear. I want to hear him say, well done. I want to hear the angels sing. I want to hear that heavenly chorus. I want to join that ransom throne. Come as they sing tonight. Amen. Let's cry out to God. Let's call on the Lord tonight. Tomorrow's just on credit. There's no guarantee of time. Truth could be gone in Truth fallen to the ground. Truth fallen in the streets. Because there was no one to listen. No one to hearken. No one to obey. No one to be the curator thereof. Amen. 